Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to start talking about trigonometric equations. Uh, so this is an introductory lecture, and uh, obviously it will be followed by um, problem-solving lectures. All right, so trigonometric equations. Probably you can say that any equation where one of the components is a trigonometric function is a trigonometric equation. There are some simple ones, like, for instance, 2 sine of x equals to uh, 1. Well, some obvious solution is, well, then sine of x is equal to 1 half, and we do remember that uh, the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so it's probably x equals to 30 degrees. Now, is that it? Is that a solution? Well, obviously not, because number one, sine is a periodic function, so whenever you have some value for x, obviously the, the value which is increased by 360 degrees will also be a solution, so 390 would be a, a, a solution or anything else. Uh, also, not only for an uh, angle equals to 30 degrees, sine is equal to one half. Also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, 150, and that also, that's also one half. So, it's not that simple, it's still simple, um, but it does require certain accuracy, I would say. And then there are obviously some much more complicated uh, equations which also can be called trigonometric equations. Um, I don't know, something like square root of sine x plus log times 2 of sine x plus 5 equals to 0. I, I don't know, I, I just write something which doesn't have much sense. Um, it's it looks very complicated, and quite frankly, I don't even know how to solve this. Maybe if, if I really try, maybe I would. But that's not really what I would like to, to, to present you right now. I would like to present you with simple trigonometric equations, which we can solve analytically to come up with some formula, actually, which is the solution to these trigonometric equations, and then gradually increase the complexity of this. So, Forget about this, we will never be talking about this nonsense. Um, so, let's start with simple trigonometric equations. And uh, uh, the first one which I would like to talk about is the following one. Now, don't be surprised that this is tangent. For some reason, traditionally, we used to think that sine and cosine are the first trigonometric functions we are talking about, and then we go to tangent, because actually tangent is defined as sine over cosine. But in this particular case, in the case of equations, it's easier to start with tangent, and you will understand why a little later. Um, now, if you would like to... Um, solve an equation, there are many different approaches, obviously. You can do it analytically, you can do it graphically, you can do it numerically, etc., etc. Um, what I would like to um, emphasize is the graphical aspect of, of this equation, and some others as well. Now, if you have a general equation which looks like that, where f is some function, and you would like to address this particular equation from the graphical standpoint, how would you approach it? Well, you would do the following. You would first draw the graph of this function, which is something, whatever it is. Then you would draw the graph of this function, which is just a straight line parallel to the x-axis, at point of uh, y equals to a. So it's this. And where, wherever these two are intersect, intersecting each other, so the graph of the function f of x 
and the straight line, which is a graph of this function. So it's this point, this point, this point, everywhere else, wherever it exists. Take their x coordinates, and these are solutions because at f uh, of uh, at, at point x1, f of x1 is equal to this according to this graph, and it's a as well. So that's why f of x1 is equal to a. Same thing, f at x2. It's this point, and it's also a. Uh, the origin of this, po uh, of, of this point is a, and so is f at x3. So x1, x2, and x3, and any other um, abscissa of intersecting, of intersection of these two, graph and the, uh, and the straight line, these are all solutions. OK. We know that, so let's go to tangent. This is just a general theory about graphical solutions. What's the graph of the tangent? Well, first of all, if you don't remember it, I do suggest you to just stop this lecture and go to the tangent uh, lecture and uh, just uh, refresh your memory. Um, I'll just tell you the following, that if this is a tangent then the graph looks like this. These are vertical lines. And tangent, this is minus p over 2, this is p over 2, this is 0. And tangent is asymptotically close to these vertical lines uh, on this particular uh, interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. It's not defined at the end, end, end of this interval, but it's defined everywhere in between, and it takes all the values from minus infinity to plus infinity, and that's the graph of this function tangent of x on this particular period. And then this period actually repeats itself. So let me just have one more thing. So it's about this. So this is pi. And same thing here. This is minus pi. So that's the graph of the function y is equal to tangent x. Now, this is the line y is equal to a. So this is a. So where are our solutions? They are here. So if you drop down the perpendicular from these points where the line y is equal to a intersects with the graph of the function y is equal to tangent x. These are x where tangent is equal to a. And these are solutions. Now, obviously, since the tangent is a monotonic function on the interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, for, and, and it takes all the values from minus infinity to plus infinity, um, obviously there is one and only one point within this interval where the tangent is equal to one concrete value, a. And what is this point? Well, if you remember, and again, if you don't, go to the corresponding lecture about inverse trigonometric function. This is actually a definition of the function arc tangent of A. So the function arc tangent of A is inverse to tangent, but only on this particular uh, interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. While argument of the function arc tangent is 
changing from minus infinity to plus infinity, the result of this function is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, not including the ends of this interval. So this is a solution to this equation. Now, as we know, this particular interval, which is a base interval of monotonic behavior, is actually also a period of the function. So it exactly repeats left and right up to infinity, which means that we can add to this value a period, a period is equal to pi, or two periods, or three periods, or subtract a period, or two periods, or three periods, which means that the total solution, the, the set of all the solutions uh, of this particular equation um, can be um, uh, written as x is equal to arc tangent of a plus n pi. Pi is a period. Let me just get rid of this. Arc tangent of A. So if A is this constant in the equation tangent x is equal to A, then the solution to this equation x is equal to uh, a solution of the equation in the base uh, uh, interval where the function is monotonic and this is the, the period uh, plus period times any integer m plus or minus basically integer can be positive or negative so the set of infinite set of solutions because n can be any uh, integer number countable obviously because integers are countable so the solutions, there are infinite number of solutions to this particular equation, and these are described by this particular formula where n is any uh, integer number. That's it. No more complications for tangent. So we have actually solved the equation in two steps. First, we determined uh, the base interval where the function is monotonic, and that's why we can very easily uh, invert uh, this particular equation and uh, determine the argument if we know the function. Now, if the function is not monotonic, like parabola, for instance, and you have one particular um, value which you would like to uh, find where are the arguments where the parabola takes this value. There will be two. Um, but in this case, if the function is monotonic, it's always one and it's determined on this particular interval of uh, base interval of monotonic behavior. It's determined by this particular formula. And this is the definition of the function arctangent, uh, so I don't have to really explain why it's, it's, it's that. And then we just add the period. And again, let me just emphasize one more um, thing. That the base period, the base interval of monotonic behavior and the period of the function are exactly the same. That helps in this particular case, which will not be the case for sine and cosine. And that's why I started with tangent, because it looks simpler. Now let's go to cotangent. And that's as simple, actually. We just have to use different... Uh, intervals, but it's also the same type of uh, solution. So, we have equation cotangent uh, of x equals to a. So, back to the graphic of cotangent. Cotangent is slightly different, um, but uh, again, if you don't remember it exactly, go to the corresponding lecture for cotangent and this graph, and you will see that the period is also pi. Uh, however, the period, uh, the base interval of monot monotonic behavior is not from minus pi to plus pi, like in tangent, but from zero to pi. That's the graph. So the base interval is 
which we are considering is from 0 to pi, not including the ends, of course, where cotangent is not defined. Um, the graph looks like this. It's monotonic. It's monotonically decreasing, not increasing like tangent, but doesn't matter. What matters, what matters is that it's monotonic, which means this equation always have one and only one solution, which by definition of the function arc, arc cotangent So by definition of the function arc cotangent, the arc, arc cotangent of A is a solution to this particular equation in this particular interval of monotonic behavior, which happened to be at the same time the interval which is the, uh, the period of the function. So all we have to do now is to add the period. So if you have here 2 pi, and it goes like this, so you have another value. They are different by pi, or 2 pi, or 3 pi, or minus 2 pi. So the whole solution will be arc cotangent of A plus N pi. Now, um, obviously, I, uh, I'm not actually talking about some peculiarities, like, for instance, the cotangent is not defined at 0 or a pi or 2 pi, etc. But this situation would not occur, because the arc cotangent of A always exists. Doesn't matter which A is. Wherever A is, there is always uh, the, uh, the intersection. And it's always in between 0 and pi, not including the ends. So I don't really have to think about can I have a solution x is equal to 0 or x is equal to pi? No, I will not have it because of this. Arc cotangent cannot have a value of 0 or pi or anything like that. And that's the same thing as before. Uh, I, I actually should have mentioned it for arc tangent. These peculiar values where the cotangent doesn't exist would not be solutions. This formula doesn't allow them for this. Okay, fine. These are two simple cases, tangent and cotangent. Now let's go to sine and cosine, which are just a little bit more difficult. And we will understand why in a second. So we'll go with sine. Let's say sine of x is equal to a. That's an equation. Now, again, the graph of sine. Uh, so this is pi. This is minus pi. This is minus pi over 2. This is pi over 2. The function goes uh, like this and like this. This is 1, this is minus 1. Now, this is a period from minus pi to pi. I mean, I can take any um, uh, interval which has the length of 2 pi, because 2 pi is a period, but this is the most convenient interval. I'll explain why. Um, first of all, what we observe here that on this period, function is not monotonic. Like period for a tangent was pi, and the period and, and, and the basic interval of monotonic behavior is also uh, has a length of pi from minus pi over two to pi over two, similar to cotangent. This is not the case. So if I will draw a line. y is equal to a, well, number one, that line might not even intersect the graph. If a is above 1 or below minus 1, we don't have any solutions. So the first thing which comes to mind is 
that the a should be from minus 1 to 1 if we want to have any solutions. Because if it's not, then there is no solutions. Sign will not be greater than 1 or less than minus 1. Okay, so that's one thing. But even after that restriction, we still have a problem. You see, we have two points where the graph of uh, sine intersects with a straight line. And we somehow have to deal with this. Now, in the previous case, with tangent and cotangent, we had the solution obtained in two steps. One, we solved it uh, on, a basis, on a base interval of monotonic behavior, which happens to be the same as the interval of periodicity. And so all we had to do on the second step is just to add period times some, some integer number n, plus n times pi. pi. In this particular case, the period is, uh, has a length of 2 pi, from minus pi to pi I chose, but the periodicity, but, but the, uh, the monotonic behavior is on a narrower interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And that's actually, that's where our arc sine function is defined. So only on this particular period, on this particular interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, we can really use arc sine. And this particular value, this particular value, this x, this x is, in this particular case, is arc sine of a. But, as we know, by definition of the arc sine, x is only from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. What about this guy? This is also obvious a solution, obviously a solution. Now, here, you, you have to, well, I'm, from the, from, just, just from looking at this particular graph, you see that this, this uh, interval is equal to this interval. Now, what does it mean? Remember, sine of x is equal to sine of pi minus x, right? Remember this? Again, if you don't remember this elementary identity, check with the corresponding lecture on trigonometric identity. And it's very easy, actually, to see from the unit circle. Because what is a sign on the unit circle? It's ordinate, right? So if you have a point here, and point here, both ordinates are the same. So sine of this angle, and sine of this angle, are the same. Now, if this is x, this is obviously pi minus x, right? So that's exactly the same thing. So, using this particular identity, I can see that, at least for a positive a, let's just consider positive a when um, the intersection uh, is in, uh, uh, in the interval from 0 to pi. This uh, point of intersection is arc sine, and this one is pi minus the first one, right? So we have two solutions. Pi minus arc sine of a. So this is x1, this is x2. So we have two solutions. This is for positive a. Okay, how about for negative a? Here is a. Now, this again, this x1, is arc sine, because, so again, we have x1 equals to arc sine, okay? And how about this one? Well, same thing, but we have to start from minus pi and add this arc sine, but it's negative, so it's, again, minus uh, x2 is equal to arc sine is negative, right? It's negative. So if I want to go to the right, I have to basically subtract the negative. So it's minus pi minus arc sine of a. These are two solutions. And finally, if a is equal to zero, you have one, 
two, and three solutions. Well, let's just not consider this A is equal to zero right now. We will consider it a little bit later when I combine everything into one formula. All right, so we have these two cases. Um, now, how to uh, generalize these to the entire um, uh, real values of, uh, of, of x? Well, let's forget about this graph. We don't want it anymore. So we can say that in this particular case, I have to add basically a period to pi. So what happens is x for 1 is equal to arc sine of a plus 2 pi n, and x2 is equal to arc sine a, uh, sorry, it was a minus sign, minus arc sine a plus um, 2 pi n plus pi, right? Pi, this is the pi, minus arc sine and plus the pi. That's for a greater than equal, uh, greater or equal to zero. Let me rewrite it slightly differently. minus arc sine of a plus pi times top to n plus 1. I just uh, factored out pi. And this I will not change, I will just rewrite it in the same form, pi times 2n. So, when n is even, I have plus. Uh, not, not n, sorry. When multiplier by pi, this, uh, th this multiplier, if it's even, then this is a plus. If it's odd, this is minus. I can combine these two formulas into one, which is x is equal to minus 1, uh, to the power of k arc sine of a plus pi k, where k is any integer number. So if k is um, an even number, so it can be represented like this, then it would be minus 1 to the even power, and minus 1 in even power gives you 1. And if k is odd number, uh, minus 1 to the odd power, will, like 3, 5, etc., will always be minus 1, so it will be minus sign. So this is just a, a shorter version of these two formulas for a greater than 0. Now, let's do something similarly, something similar with, uh, with a less than 0. So I have to add 2 pi uh, n in both cases. So x1 is equal to arc sine of a plus pi times 2n. And the second one is minus arc sine of a plus, uh, plus pi and plus pi times 2n. So it's this same thing as in this case. Sorry, that's minus in this case. It's minus pi. So that's why it's 2n minus pi. But um, consider the n is any integer number. So 2n is any even number, and 2n minus 1 is any odd number. It doesn't really matter that this is 2n plus 1 and this is 2n minus 1, still, this actually goes through all the odd numbers and this goes through all the odd numbers if n is any integer. So it doesn't really matter whether it's minus 1 or plus 1, it's still an odd number, any odd number. As n is moving across the all integers, this is moving across all the 
odd integer numbers, which means this, that, that I can combine them into exactly the same formula. where k is any integer number. So the solution is exactly the same. I don't have to differentiate it anymore. So I can say that this is one and only solution which combines all the values of, uh, uh, which combines all, this, all other solutions in one formula where k is moving uh, along the old integer values. Now, by the way, I didn't want to consider the case a is equal to zero, not because it's any special. Uh, it's exactly here. I'm just saying that if a is equal to zero, then it doesn't really matter what k is, odd or even. Arc sine of zero is equal to zero, because that's the only angle sine of which is equal to uh, zero in the base interval of monotonic behavior. So it doesn't matter what kind of a uh, exponent here is, it will be zero, and that's why the solution would be only pi k. So for a is equal to zero, solution is pi times k, where k is any integer. Just simpler formula. I didn't want to um, put so much attention to this. All right, so basically that's it for a sign. As you see, it's slightly more complex than with tangent. With tangent, we did it in two steps. One is base interval of monotonic behavior, which exactly the same as the, uh, per, uh, the, the period. In case of a sine, we have to do it in three steps. First, the base interval of monotonic behavior, where we can use arc sine, the inverse function. Then we have expanded it to a period by just adding, uh, by, uh, by changing like pi minus arc sine or minus pi minus arc sine. And then the third step is exactly the same as before. The last step is expand using the periodicity. So just one more steps. Two steps for tangent and three steps for, for sine. And cosine would be exactly the same thing. Let me just do it quickly. So the equation is cosine of x is equal to a. Obviously, solution exists only in case of a is in between 1 and 0. So now let's go back to the graph and establish the, uh, the period and the base monotonic behavior. Now cosine looks like this. From 0 to 2 pi. This is pi. This is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. And the monotonic behavior is from 0 to pi. Here, the function is monotonically decreasing, which means we can solve this particular equation on this interval without any problems. And the solution is arc cosine of a. So that's the, that's the solution. Arc cosine of a. But there is another one, which is here. How can we find this solution? Well, very similarly. Uh, obviously, this is equal to this. So, cosine, as we know, is a, an even function, which means cosine of x is equal to cosine of minus x. And cosine of minus x, since cosine is a periodic function, is equal to cosine of 2 pi minus x. I just added 2 pi to the argument, right? And this is exactly what it is, 2 pi minus this. This is just basically a, an explanation why, if this is a solution, then this 2 pi minus arc cosine of a, or minus arc cosine of a, are solutions as well. And these are just different in, in 2 pi, 
and this is different from this by the sine, and the cosine is a, a even function, so these are all solutions. Now, if A is positive, and if A is negative, it's actually, actually the same thing. Then this would be the arc sine, and again, this length is equal to this length. So basically, I don't even have to consider two, even, two, two different cases when A is positive or A is negative. The solutions are always this and this. All right? Now, 2 pi minus would actually fall within the, the period from 0 to 2 pi. That's why I might actually prefer that to write in this particular case. But it doesn't really matter in the general case when I expand it to the whole, um, to the whole uh, set of different values of arguments, because if I add the periodicity, if I add 2 pi n, basically, then whether I add this 2 pi here or it will be just part of this 2 pi n doesn't really matter. So the solution are plus minus arc cosine a plus 2 pi n, where n is any integer number. That's the general solution to this particular equation. Well, that's it. Um, this is just an introduction to trigonometric equations. Now, the real problems related to trigonometric equations are obviously much more complicated than these, and we will consider them in the future lectures. But what I would like to say is that most likely um, these trigonometric equations which are presented to you as problems uh, will be reduced eventually to these using just regular algebraic methods. Uh, just let me give you an example. What if you have something like sine squared of x is equal to uh, I don't know, one half? Well, it's a combination of two things, algebraic and trigonometric. Algebraic is sine squared. So what if you have an equation which is like y squared is equal to one half. How to solve this? Well, obvious the solutions are y is equal to plus or minus uh, one over square root of two, right? Or plus or minus square root of two over two, which is the same thing. And now we have to think about, okay, y is not just a y, this is a sine of x. So I have to solve the equations sine of x is equal plus or minus square root of two over two. Right? And this has its own solutions. For plus square root over 2, it's in the base uh, uh, interval of periodicity, it's 45 degrees, it's pi over 4, and then you have to expand it using the general formula. And for minus, it would be minus pi over 2, and also expand it to, to the period, and then to uh, the entire uh, set of values. So, it's it's, again, combination. First, you do something algebraically until you solve it to the level of one single equation of this type. And then you apply trigonometry to get the final solution for, for x. That's the general idea. I mean, obviously, there are some variations. But most of the uh, e equations which are related to, uh, to trigonometry, which need, need, need to be solved, they are of that type. So first, you apply some algebraic methodology, and then finally you go through the trigonometric, uh, trigonometric uh, uh, part, trigonometric steps, if you wish. All right, so uh, be prepared that next lectures would be uh, evolved around um, solving the problems. And um, that's it for today. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, good luck.